So I built a six element Yagi beam for 433.5 megahertz, this guy here. And uh, just figured I'd share that with everybody who's interested in building such a thing. Um, this being UHF, somewhat trickier than say uh, VHF or low VHF, that sort of thing, because um, everything's tighter tolerances. There's uh, everything's smaller. It's more susceptible to uh, a very small change making a very large change in the response of um, the antenna itself. And also we can compare it slightly somewhat with the uh, commercial version here. This guy is cut for the A block of the 800 megahertz uh, cellular band. You can see it's a very similar construction. We have uh, your input connection here goes to a, a rod that's inside of this sleeve insulated with uh, I'm assuming polypropylene and then this whole assembly makes a loop and it goes back and this portion of the uh, dri uh, driven here is grounded at the middle. So same with this guy here, very similar. Um, we've got the, uh, the connector here, we've got our um, rod that's active here. There's insulation, I know it's just tape right now. And when we take a look at it from the other way, we see that this driven element here is grounded in the center. And this, this whole loop, the capacitance in the adductance of this loop of the um, gamma match here, uh, takes the characteristic 20, 25 ohm impedance of a, an antenna like this, this style, the Yagi, and this uh, gamma match here corrects the impedance so that the radio is happy, basically. And the whole thing uh, is active and radiates, and if we get a very low return loss on this, we can assume that uh, the energy that we're putting in here, the vast majority of it is getting radiated off of this antenna. So let's go over a few things that uh, I did when I was building this, and a couple of pointers I, I think you might be interested in. I got the design off the internet. Uh, there's many places to go on the internet for uh, finding decent designs like this. This one is was pretty fussy. It was, uh, it's a narrow band uh, tuned for maximum gain. So it's, it's pretty, pretty touchy. You can see the, how sharp the dip is here and it's nearly 40 dB return loss, which is a lot. Um, whether that's true or not, I'm not really sure, but the SWR is pretty good. And uh, if you go and you uh, adjust and have a look at both ends here, uh, at the 1.5 uh, SWR points, you'll come out with about 430 to 436 megs. So it's got about a six, uh, we'll, we'll call it a six megahertz bandwidth. If you wanna go for a two to, two to one SWR, of course it would be much wider. But uh, it's uh, quite nice that way, but because it's so finely tuned here, when you actually have a look at the antenna itself, I can get my hands near it and it will detune and things will jump around quite a bit and it's very fussy. Uh, I've got to put something in here. This is not quite complete yet. Um, one thing it needs probably is an end connector here but I just thought I would put this thing together and uh, just show you how well it's worked out and I, I'm quite happy with it uh, gain and performance wise. Uh, this here uh, took some took some doing to get all this all tuned in. There's quite a lot of time involved in just getting this just so. And I'll go over some of the details of how I actually built the thing, and I'll, I'll give you some uh, some tips about things that uh, might save you some time and learn from my mistakes, sort of thing. So a little bit of detail about the construction that I used. Uh, it's basically all aluminum except this little uh, piece of copper pipe in here. Um, here's one thing I would change that uh, caused me some troubles. I used too large a piece of copper pipe, probably some 12 gauge uh, house wiring. You know, the, the solid copper wire from 12 gauge house wiring would have been a, a better choice in here. Also, you'll notice it's simply wrapped in tape. Like I say, the uh, antenna itself is not really complete yet. This should probably be covered with something along the lines of uh, heat shrink or just uh, some rubber tubing or something like that, get it over there. Um, this being the uh, UHF connector should be changed to N. It's just in with a couple of a few screws to just to keep it in place. And you'll notice that I used uh, aluminum pop rivets here. So everything that uh, 
was done here was basically done with hand tools, can be done with hand tools. Uh, to mount the actual elements themselves, these elements were slightly larger than the actual hole. Uh, they Nominally, these are quarter inch. I'm not sure what that is in millimeters, sorry. But the holes were drilled quarter inch and holes being what they are, they're usually not round exactly when you're hand drilling with uh, hand drills, that sort of thing. Um, so when I, once I got these large enough, I had to take a round file to the holes and make them large enough for these to fit into. The thing is, then they become loose and either you put screws in or you put screws in here and hold them in. What I chose to do instead was to make them, once they were just a little bit loose and I could get them moving back and forth, I would peen the aluminum. I'd smash it basically with a hammer, with a, a small sledgehammer, which spread that spread it out right in this area here so that when it went in there I had to pound these in because this is expanded it's flattened slightly so it works out really well and the whole antenna is made so that it can all be taken apart so I can drill out these and I can take this off of here I can pound all the elements back through either side uh, so the whole thing is changeable in case there was some sort of mistake you'll see here I'll, I'll show you, I'll give you a better view of this, uh, the part of the matching element here. Well, one thing too was when I first started out, I was putting pipes this hole over here. I started out with a pipe this big in here and I couldn't get it tuned high enough. It would only go to about 412 megs. So I'd put a piece of smaller pipe in and then a smaller piece of pipe. And eventually I got rid of all the pipe altogether. And I ended up having to cut part of this off because this amount of capacitance just with this little bar right here and uh, around this, the insulated part here, that was more than enough to make this whole thing match because we're working at 433 megs. So uh, that was a bit of a, that took a quite a while to figure that that was j still too much capacitance and I had to chop this guy down a little bit thinner. The reason I used a bar this size here is so that I could get screws first of all it's what I had plus also this here screw allows me to move this back and forth on here and uh, get the thing in tune but that that width was still too much still too much capacitance so here's a three element Yagi cut for about uh, 800 and some megs uh, the, the, the cellular antenna um, made by Sinclair it's a, it's a well-built piece of a piece of gear. Um, you notice the diameter of the elements here. Not only does that make it strong for weatherproofing, ice loads, that sort of thing, but it also gives us some bandwidth. So the large diameter of these compared to the frequency and compared to the length of the elements, they're, they're quite broad. And uh, here's our matching, matching and tuning assembly. There's all this stud here, these stubs. And uh, you can see how it's how it's made very similar to the ones that I've made as well. You're basically a common gamma um, configuration here. A set screw here, I see there's one missing down here, but uh, this whole assembly can be slid back and forth. This can be slid back and forth. You can adjust this over something, some range. So here we can see the frequency response of the uh, 800 megahertz cellular antenna. It looks like it's cut for the uh, lower portion of the 800 megahertz band, which is I think the A block. Uh, roughly 820 something megahertz to about 850. So not too bad down here. Um, you can see we're one and a half over here. We can see we're less than 1.5 SWR um, and we're at 851 megs. And if we slide this over a little bar over to the other side to get about one and a half uh, on the SWR, we can see that's at 780 megs. So this little portion right in here, the A block, the antenna's uh, doing pretty good there. Uh, better than a, well, most of the time it's better than a 20 dB return loss, so that's that's pretty good. And of course this, uh, this antenna can also be adjusted somewhat too. You can slide some of the elements back and forth on the, uh, in the gamma match. And here's a shot from the ground of the six meter uh, Yagi that I built probably 30 years ago, four element. Um, we can see that it's also a gamma match, way easier to tune than the UHF, as you might expect. It's uh, much more forgiving. Uh, copper pipe, uh, you can see the, the white uh, insulator there as well. It just give it a bit of mechanical strength. 
Um, it, it's, it's been up there for quite some time and it's, it's one of those temporary things that just uh, has lasted a long time.